Hello everyone and welcome to this short introduction into um, the AI workbench in combination with our sorting plant project. Um, first of all, I will introduce a little bit into how we set up all the blocks provided by the, the um, by Siemens and how we um, use this block into our project, which is then really similar to the um, Outfab project, but I will come to this later. First of all, as you can see, this is our hardware setup. We have our um, S7500 as well as our TMNPU. This digital inputs, outputs, and analog inputs, outputs are um, in use for our um, sorting plant to control our sorting plant and to get the and receive the inputs and the outputs from the sorting plant. First. You need from the TMNPU the hardware identifier, which you can find here. This is a preset um, identifier from the tier portal. So if you drag and drop um, from the Technologic module, you can find here the TMNPU. You drag and drop it here into your rack, then you get um, the hardware identifier. Um, predefined from the tier, um, mo um, tier program and this hardware identifier you need later in the program. So for the setup and all the firmware updates you can find um, this Siemens manual setting up the TMNPU where it's defined which software num version for the TMNPU you need as well as the requirements for the um, S7500, so it should be the film version up to 2.5 or higher, um, as well as in our case it was the B.101 version of the TMNPU, but um, I think this is uh, constantly updated, so this should be looked for if you start to integrate the hardware in your program. The next step so you can find in the main um, where we started everything. This is the blocks for the sorting plant and here our program stands. So first of all we had this um, little block and the neural network counter which provides us all the data which we need later um, for the neural network. Um, it's like the inductive counters and capacitive counters as well as the value and as the value of the tower and the different stones and the belt time. Um, this little block just computes us everything which we need. And then we need our neural network works with um, integer. That's why we change our belt time, which is a time from a um, timer block into an integer. So this both uh, provides us our data and now we come to these the blocks which are uh, given by the Siemens people. Um, so first of all this is the get app status block. This is a block which um, if it's enabled, it should be all the time enabled. It constantly asks for the app status and provides um, the status of the app. The different app status can be found in the Siemens manual where the, um, all these blocks are described as well. And there you can find the different um, states of the um, app. So in the app program you can find the counterpart of this, so the providing from the app sent back um, to the tier portal of the app status. And as I said before, you need everywhere the hardware identifier, which you have to find out before. Um, the next one, where is the net neural network control? This is a control block. It um, triggers the function ID in the application. So with this block you can trigger a, pre a predefined function from the application via this function ID. Um, we don't use this 
in the in our application the sorting plant application because um, we only use the push data block where I come to later and this push data block triggers our function in our application so this is just um, this block is just integrated and can be used to trigger another function not the function which we actually use for our um, application the neural network execute control is the uh, block which acts with the neural net control this means if you execute it and it gets a status back it gets on the input done um, some um, a status of a true value and this true value just um, pre resets our execute so that you trigger it once and if you get the state it, it will be again reset it automatically in uh, the next block this neural network get result block we received actual results of our application so um, here you can find the hardware identifier too as well as um, all the other stuff which you need and um, the data which is the result. I will come to the data later if I go to the data block of this function block. So this function should be enabled the whole time as well to receive every result which the application provides. This block is the main um, block in this program. This It pushes the data from our neural network from our application to the neural network um, and this data block PLC to NPU transfer data is the data which is actual um, pushed to the neural network the trans neural net transfer block just um, locate our neural network data from our sorting plant to our date to our data block which is then pushed to the application so in this app data block we have all the different um, blocks set it up so we get our app status um, get app status block um, it's a predefined variable, so it's a PLC data type, which is predefined. You can find it here. There are all these um, predefined data types. Um, with, as shown, this is then allocated to our function block. And here you find the push data block. This data is not. Um, um, it's not allocated to our function block because we use this other data block for it, a separate data block. Otherwise, you have always to change the whole PLC data type and this is not really um, good and really easy to change. You have always to upload everything again and so we uh, it's better to use a separate data block only for this they push data and here you can see the get result which is always true and the data this is like a type NPU to PLC it's, it's a predefined um, PLC data type from ourselves and there you can find all the results which has to match with the application which what the application outputs and in our PLC NPU data transfer block and uh, data block, we use this send struct, and the send struct consists on a data type and a variable type ID. This is mainly caused by our um, MQ by our data management team, which then um, which which had has a function, a separate function on the application, which then sorts 
the value which is always the next variable and sorts then which in the application which type it is and um, which ID which on which position the application should use it and this is the block you can change this one but you have always to adapt this one in the application as well otherwise it won't be matched together okay the blocks you can find here in the function blocks um, which we used there are two different other blocks uh, application start block and application stop block which mainly just start the app or stops the app um, we don't use it because we always want to have the application running the whole time and every time we mainly trigger with our push data function block the application we want to receive and result that's why we don't stop or we don't start this application this runs the whole time and we didn't use this blocks as well as that you have to integrate this start and stop function in the application too if you want to use it so I think this is our short introduction into the use of the function blocks I hope this video can help you a little bit and um, shows a little bit what we have done for the outfab it's nearly similar the only thing what changes in the outfab program is the get result and the push data blocks which is mainly cost because we need other data in our neural network for computing then all the outputs which we need so um, yeah this was the little introduction um, and see you